morning, Lord bless. Good to be back with you again today as we continue through the Word of God. We are in 1 Samuel chapters 20, 21, and 22. And uh, we'll read together starting in 1 Samuel chapter 20. And David fled to Naoth and Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? <clears throat> and he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David sware moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved, but truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desire, I will do even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asketh leave of me, that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well. Thy servant shall have peace, but if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with the, thy servant, and for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee, for if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answereth thee wroth, roughly? And they, Jonathan said unto David, Come and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time, or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not unto thee, and show it thee, the, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace, and the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not, but also that, excuse me, thou shalt not cut off the kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan calls David to swear again, because he loved him, and for he loved him as his, as he loved his own soul. And then said, then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shall remain by the stone in the zeal. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on the side of thee, take them, then come thou from, then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, Go thy way, for the Lord has sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord between thee and me forever. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat down to meet, sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, 
that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Where cometh, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my brother he hath commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not into the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse rebellious woman, do not, I know, thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and into the confusion of thy mother's nakedness. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul's father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? And what hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out to the field at the appointed time with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south, fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept, with, uh, wept one with another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. First Samuel chapter 21. Then David came, excuse me, then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid <clears throat> at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I have sent thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand. But there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves, at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in manner, in a manner common, yea, though it were satisfied this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread, that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The word of, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And David laid up these, excuse me, 
And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saw the slain thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned for himself mad in their hands, and scrambled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see, the mad man, the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? First Samuel chapter 22. Then David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adulamah. And when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said <clears throat> unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my brother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold. Depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hareth. When Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Geba under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood by him, Here now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds that all of you have conspired against me and there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league with the son of jesse and there is none of you that is sorry for me and showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me till i wait as at this day then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Atu. And he inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Atu, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Here now, thy son of Astu. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have you conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie and wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law? and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footman that stood by him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said unto Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Atub, named Abathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abathar showed David and that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abathar, I knew it that day. 
when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Whew, that's good. Amen. Uh, good to be with you and reading in God's word today. Look forward to reading with you again tomorrow. Continuing on this journey of reading our Bibles through in a year. Lord bless. See you tomorrow.